and have a copy of this. <laughs> and it tells everybody, oh, we've got recording in progress. You'll uh, probably get used to hearing that in class. Also with us today, we have Donna Elke. She's our new administrative assistant. She's been in with LifeQuest for a few years, driving the van and going through COVID with us, getting used to being online and stuff. Um, we're excited to have you here. Uh, as you can tell by our first screen, congratulations. You've made it to this uh, Zoom class. So you're on your way to attending classes. And if you uh, had any difficulty with getting in here, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, we want you to know that we're excited to start the summer term next week, and uh, we're excited that you're here today. I'm going to go ahead and advance to the next screen. Just want to give you a quick overview of what we're doing here today. We're going to uh, give you some general tips about being online and LifeQuest in general. And I see Leah connecting now. And this is great news because this is the portion she usually does. And so thank you for being here and I will turn it over to Leah. Sorry, I had trouble connecting. Um, so in this class, we're gonna talk about what are we doing online? What are we gonna do today? We're going to talk about what uh, our online classes are about, how to find them, how to log into our website so that you can join easily. Uh, Zoom classes, that's probably the main thing I think most people want to know is, well, how do I get to class? And we'll, we'll show you how to navigate that in a very few steps. And then we're going to show you how to operate some of the basics of Zoom. You do not have to be an expert, and I will repeat this many times, but if you can uh, get to this class today, you can get to online classes. And you don't have to do anything more than log in and then uh, open Zoom. And so if you're here today, then you can do it. You don't have to be a Zoom expert. And then um, if you would like, you can stick around and learn about Facebook, how to find classes and recordings of classes um, on Facebook uh, and how to join our private Facebook group as opposed to our public Facebook page. So we'll tell you a little bit about that. At any point, you can raise your hand. Uh, physically, you can wave to us, you can ask questions, and at any point if you need to leave, that's fine too. This is a workshop, it's a tutorial, it's meant to address your questions, and so we want to um, answer those today, that's our purpose. And you can come back next week if you have more. So if you're going to raise your hand or ask a question, you probably need to know the very, very basic, which is how to unmute yourself. And so the mute button on Zoom looks like an old-fashioned microphone. That's what the yellow arrow is pointing to. Sometimes you have to touch your screen or move your mouse, move your cursor to wake up that toolbar. It'll either drop down from the top or pop up from the bottom, depending on what device you're using. And you'll see the very far corner uh, usually your left corner, the mute button. If it's red with a line through it, you're muted. So you need to click on it to unmute yourself. Does anybody have any questions about what we're gonna cover so far or what we're gonna do today? I need to raise the volume of mine. Uh, Bob's having trouble the hearing. Volume of your computer. Pardon? The, you, your computer volume raises in a few different ways. It's not something in the Zoom program. It's just however you raise the volume to watch videos or anything else. Do you uh, have a button that you normally push or? I, I, I did, uh, I, I had a button to uh, change the audio before you launched the program, but, but that button disappeared and I don't know how to raise the volume now. Are you using a desktop computer? like a computer that's uh, a laptop or a Macintosh? I'm, I'm or... using a desktop computer and I'm okay. having a lot of trouble hearing you, which is why I need to raise the volume. Right. Uh, if you move your mouse in uh, the not, bottom. Um, I, I'd, say, I'd say I get about 50% of what you say. Okay. Your mouse in the bottom uh, left corner, do you see the speaker symbol? No, I don't see a speaker symbol. 
Gina, I'll, I'll say on mine, it's there's an arrow next to the mute and unmute, and that leads to the speaker. But I bet he has a button on his keyboard that would do it. Some keyboards do have a button a num above the number eight. If you'll look on your keyboard above the number eight and see if you see a button that you can push to raise the volume. It depends on the age of your keyboard. I have one keyboard that does and one that doesn't. This will be difficult if you can't hear us. Well, I, 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 I wouldn't say I couldn't hear you. I just don't hear you very well. But go ahead, don't let me hold up the meeting. Okay, Did you everyone, understand? Is, everyone is unmuted right now. So I'm gonna mute you all and see if you can practice unmuting yourself and muting back. I did want to make sure that Bob understood what you said about above the number eight on your keyboard is a little plus sign or F8. Does that does that help with your volume? He's muted right now. Okay. Or sometimes isn't there like a knob up on the screen? Sometimes there's a knob you can push for. Knobs are probably from before 2000. I, I know. I don't know how old time. his. I don't know his <laughs> know. computer. That's true. How old is, how old is true. just? We'll we'll go ahead and go on. I uh, I do want everyone to practice unmuting yourself. So if you'll move your mouse and uh, practice that and just say hello. Hello. Thank you, Hi, Ella. Ella. Hello. Hello. Hi, Joan. Hi, Martha. Crystal, did you say hi? She's not unmuted. You're not unmuted right now. Uh, my sound to be loud. No, you're fine. It was before you even got on. It's when you're doing all that setup. And I, that's how I, I got my loud as I could get it because I, I can't hear. I can mean, hear good today. Okay. 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 Well, we'll meet you back. And if you have a question, go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay. Okay. All right. Leah, go ahead and go for it. Okay, what's next? Are you doing the PowerPoint? Yep. <laughs> All right. So general tips are keep your device plugged in. This is if you're using an iPad or a laptop. Keep it plugged in during class, your desktop also, but we're assuming that stays plugged in. Um, Zoom uses a lot of battery power, so sometimes you can be in the middle of class, and if your laptop runs out of energy, it's you're going to be out of class. So keep it plugged in. Um, Zoom automatically hides the toolbar or the menu bar. It keeps your screen as uncluttered as it can. And so um, if you need to, sometimes people say, well, I saw that mute button, but it disappeared. Well, that, that's on purpose. And so you have to wake up your toolbar by touching your screen or moving your mouse, moving your cursor to make the menu bar, also called toolbar, appear. Um, we uh, suggest just for uh, less distractions for you and for others that can see you that you put yourself in a room by yourself, um, isolate um, either with your with whoever is taking the class with you, your partner, um, or but try to be by yourself so you can um, see what's going on and we're not distracted by a lot of things going on behind you. Um, if you're sitting in front of a window, it, you're kind of backlit. So be sure the light is facing your face and not from behind you. Otherwise, we will just be able to see the outline silhouette of you. And we like to see faces if we're on Zoom together. Okay, that's probably some general tips. Um, <laughs> It's fine. We're pretty casual at LifeQuest, and if you're eating your lunch, that's fine, but we're going to show you how to turn your camera off just so not everybody has to watch what you eat, <laughs> um, or if you need to take a phone call or um, do something uh, else, you know, to be less distracting to the rest of the class who's wondering, what is she doing over there? We'll show you how to turn your camera off as well as meet yourself. That just makes it a little easier to take class with groups of people. Um, just like in regular class, we like everybody to pay attention and not be talking on their phone. Um, but if you have to, the nice thing about Zoom is, is that you can do it in privacy. 
So we're going to send out emails to you. This is the summer and in the fall, because we'll have some online classes in the fall as well. And we send out emails about once a week. We try not to pepper you daily, but we like to send you emails because sometimes things change and you need to know. Or we've got a new speaker lined up that you need to know about. Um, uh, new opportunities that are relevant for that week will be sent in emails. We're not going to send you the full schedule with all the Zoom numbers every week. That's too much information. You will show you how to find that on our website, but we will have some passwords that you'll need to know about. And I know passwords get confusing. We have to change our passwords every term because we have a new batch of classes, new instructors, new people, and we need to um, let everybody know what's going on for that term. So summer term passwords are different than fall term, and that's including, uh, including Facebook. So we have some public events that are open to everybody. If someone Googled or went to our live, what is LifeQuest from out of state, they never heard of us. We would want them to know that the public way to get into free and open to everybody is LifeQuest, all lowercase. That's a public password um, for LifeQuest, LifeQuest all lowercase. Then we have per term passwords and they were given to people who've paid to take our classes. And what they are sent in your registration confirmation email. And then if you're taking that, those classes, let's say for the summer term, but you want to take a class with limited enrollment, um, then let, let's say our Life Quest cook-off class, the limited classes have even a different separate password just for them because um, not everybody, even if they've paid for the term, can necessarily wander into that classroom, even by mistake, um, because they have a limited number of people that they can take. So we suggest, because we're not ringing the bell here at Second Presbyterian um, to tell you when to get to class, that you create, a, put an alarm on your phone or a note on your calendar to come to class, because you're not going to get an email saying it's time for class. Um, that you have to manage yourself. And then I do want to remind you that we still are doing some curbside pickup um, on Thursdays, 2.30 to 3.30 for our meals. And we're excited to have some great meals. Brenda is our wonderful chef at Second Presbyterian Church, and they are handmade, specially made meals just for you. Um, they are limited in number. So we have a first come, first serve policy for Brenda's meals every Thursday, and this will continue through the fall, 2.30 to 3.30. Okay, so if you have not registered, I think everybody here has, but if you've not registered, classes begin Monday the 5th. You can go online um, by mail or by telephone, and our office hours are Monday through Thursday. A lot of times people think that we're here every day of the week, but we're actually closed on Fridays, and you can most easily find us during our office hours nine to four, Monday through Thursday. The building of Second Presbyterian Church is still closed to the public. They are allowing some limited small numbers of church members in this summer. In the fall, we'll be able to have our small classes back in person, but all of our other larger lecture classes will continue to be online. So the, the way we kind of look at passwords and LifeQuest is we have our public face um, to anybody in the world who wants to know what LifeQuest is. And 99% of everything that's open to the public is on our website. Anybody can Google LifeQuest and find information about LifeQuest on our website. Um, and, and, we, and there are links on our public website, LifeQuest of Arkansas, that will take you to YouTube. You can find us on Facebook. We're open to the public so that people can find us just like any business or any nonprofit. But if you're a paid member, why would you uh, pay for it if anybody could find the classes? So you, if a paid member for a term gets access to the private information that they've paid for. And they do that by logging in to our website um, by the password that's given to you when you register. You can also join a private Facebook group and every term it has a little bit different name. In the spring, it was LifeQuest Spring 2021. This summer, it's LifeQuest Summer 2021. And guess what it'll be for the fall? 
Um, that's on Facebook. If you're a Facebooker and you, you can create a Facebook account and you can join the private group on Facebook, you just have to search for it and then ask to join. Um, and then you can also see our recordings on our private YouTube channel. Um, and the best way to access that is by logging into our website. So we're going to show you how to do that. But I just kind of wanted to point out those two ways of looking at LifeQuest, the public umbrella and the private umbrella. I've talked a little bit about that registration email and the password that is given to you in that registration email. And this is what that email looks like. Gina, do you want to tell us about this? Sure. So when you register online, you'll get an email automatically sent to you that says, thank you for registering for classes or for paying for meals or for uh, registering for our library. We don't automatically send this information that has the password because we don't know what you've paid for online. And so after we get confirmation that you did register for classes, we send you this registration email. The very first thing at the top, it says, click here to visit and bookmark our website. So lifequestofarkansas.org is our website. If you've uh, not visited it yet, you might wanna look at it and explore it before next week happens and we go live with classes. On that website, there is a section where you can log in. The username uh, is covered up with green and so is the password for this term, covered up with green. That's because this class is open to the public. Anybody can watch this class but only paid members get to log in. So um, you can write that on a sticky next to your computer and save it for when you log in or ask your computer to save the password and then it will save it for you and put it in there. Um, the next thing underneath that, it says that if you haven't attended class before, we would love for you to join us in this how to be online class. Today, after this class, it is uh, being recorded and we'll upload the recording on our website. And if you uh, finish this hour with us and you still have questions, feel free to come by next week and say, you know, I once wasn't enough, I need to do it again. And we've had people multiple times take this class before. Um, we know it's a lot of information to learn at one time. And so just kind of let it wash over. You don't feel like you've got to take notes, uh, just, you know, Read this email carefully. It'll also say, you know, click here to join the group. Uh, it tells you when materials pickup is. If you're in a limited class like great books or paper crafting, we're doing a pickup this week for those. Uh, we want you to contact us with questions. And so um, if you have questions after you get this email and you click all the links, give us a call or attend the how to be online again next week and see if it makes more sense. When you do log in to the website, this is what the website will look like. It will say, welcome to your class portal. And there'll be a button underneath that says class, class access. That's a tongue twister. And it has those two little arrows next to it. And then underneath it, it says materials. And so if there's an instructor that has uh, illustrations they want to share or a reading list, or they have a syllabus or links that they want you to see, we'll put it in the class material section. Most of the classes that we do are recorded. So if you have a doctor's appointment and can't be there, or you like to sleep late and want to watch Alan Easton in the afternoon, go ahead and watch the recordings later. Of course, we encourage you to attend as many classes during the class time as possible because the instructors can see you and see how many are attending. And they don't always uh, know how many people are watching the recording. So it's nice for you to be there. Also in that link, you get a uh, button that says, if you wanna join our private Facebook group. Some people don't like Zoom and they have a Facebook account. And so many of our classes we also offer on Facebook. The only difference in the class is it's a little easier to interact in Zoom with your teacher because you can say things vocally you know, you could unmute yourself and say, I have a question, or you can use the chat function and we'll show you how to do that. Um, on Facebook, you can chat and someone will try to watch for questions for certain classes. Otherwise, it's just kind of like auditing a class and watching it. And it is at the same time, if you're watching the live recording, 
but uh, we may not be quite as interactive, but some people like that better and like not being known that they're watching and stuff. So it's okay. This is kind of a sample page of what the recordings page will look like. It will um, stay available until August 12th. So any class that is recorded for this summer, you'll have access to those recordings until August 12th. That's another tongue twister, it's hard to say, 12th. 12th, I don't know. Anyway, Southern accent, what can you do? All right, Leah, we're gonna get started with Zoom 101. So I'll let you cover this part. So um, when you get to uh, class and, and um, are we gonna show them exactly how to get in uh, on, a, on the live website or can we do that after maybe? We can go back and do that real quick. I'll have to take this screen down for a second. Okay, I'm sorry, I, I threw a loop and- That's okay. Let me stop sharing. I just thought it'd be nice if we kind of got to the website and walked you through how to log in because getting to Zoom is after you've logged in, you know, and, and, and then we can answer your Zoom questions, but so right, she's so gonna- This is our Life Quest of Arkansas web page. If you just go to the search engine LifeQuest, or if you, you know, you go to Google and you type in LifeQuest of Arkansas, and this is the first page you're going to see. It's an introductory page. Um, it might have a couple of new things on it. So, uh, and you know, that, woman schedule, not <laughs> that woman's not angry. That woman's not angry. That's a video. Yes, <laughs> this is a video that we have. She's uh, frozen on this section. She's uh, watching a game show like Jeopardy, and she's yelling at the TV. I know the answer to that. And you know why she knows the answer? Because of her life quest classes. That's why she knows the answer. <laughs> right underneath our logo is, uh, here's the logo at the top, is the word login. So when I click login, it says, please enter in your username and password. And this is where those are typed in and you've received those in your email. And I'll click login. And I'm going to click on class access because that's what Leah wants to show you specifically. We want to show you what it looks like when you go there. So this is a long page. It's our list of classes in chronological order. There's a little description, shows you what time. These are the Monday classes. And then we'll scroll down and we'll see the Tuesday classes. So if you uh, wake up on Tuesday and you go, you know, I don't know, maybe I'd like to attend something else today. You can read about the description and then at 11 o'clock or before 11 o'clock, you can click on one of the two buttons underneath. So Tuesday at 11, if I want to see Rick Leach's class, I can click on Zoom. And because I've paid for this term, the password is included in that when I click on it. So I don't have to enter in the password again. If I want to take this uh, cook-off class and I click the word Zoom, it's a limited class. So you'll have to type in your password to attend that class. And that will um, be given to you in advance in an yes. email. And if you'll notice also, it will say whether or not the class is being recorded. So this LifeQuest artist class, we do not record that class. But if you scroll down to the 10 o'clock advertising class, it is recorded. So if you miss it, you can find a recording of it. Um, so if you click on Facebook, I can do that because it's not gonna interrupt our Zoom meeting to show you what happens. It goes to the private group. If you're a member, uh, you'll pop right in. If you haven't requested to join, this little button over here that I'm circling will say join instead of invite. Yeah, you only have to join it once, but it's helpful to join, like to go to Facebook and join it now before classes have begun. And that way, when it's time for class, you'll be able to go right into, the, if you're choosing to attend on Facebook, you'll be able to go right into the Facebook page, but you have to do that join thing ahead of time. And that's in the fall as well. I'm gonna stop before we get to Zoom and just see if there's any questions about how to log in, how to get to, class this summer. You can unmute the yourself. Website make sense? <laughs> yeah, did that make sense to people how to find the website, how to find classes? I see an affirmation from Joan. 
Crystal's nodding. Martha's nodding. Ella and okay. Anne, yes. I can't see either I, of you. So you I'm okay with it. Thank you. Okay. 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 Good. All right. Well, because if you can log in, you can get to class. And it's nice to just be able to hit that Zoom button and not have to worry about too many other passwords. If you're in those limited classes, you'll say, okay, I've got my password because I've got my email. You'll have that ahead of time. All right, now back to some Zoom basics. What's the next screen? Okay, Zoom changes the way it looks depending on what type of device you're using. If you have a cell phone, like I'm holding up, the screen is small. So it can't put too much on that menu bar because the screen's small. If you have a, an iPad or a tablet or a laptop or a desktop, the screens are bigger and so more can be shown on the menu bar. But no matter what device you have, you can still do the same functions. You just have to know where to find things. So um, for example, um, if you're on, what is it that has the headphones instead of the um, microphone? Usually iPads. iPads? iPhones. Okay, so that's how you mute and unmute is it looks like an uh, like a headset like Gina's wearing. Mostly you'll find you'll see the old fashioned microphone and that tells you how to mute and unmute. If you go to the right of that, if you can show circle it, there you go, is the video camera. If you go to the very right to the very right of the join audio, it says start video. That's your video camera. Uh, this is just a photograph of the toolbar, but if you wake up your toolbar on your computer by moving your mouse or touching your screen, you will see to the very right of your mute, you'll have the same video camera. And that's how you turn your video camera off and on. Okay, Gina, can they see me depending on we're assuming? If they or, have their active speaker view, yes. Okay, well, let's both of us turn our video cameras off. So Gina and I have turned our cameras off, but you can still hear us. So if I needed to um, eat something, I might still want to hear and I might still want y'all to hear me, but you don't need to see me eating my lunch. For <laughs> so instance, I'm Ella my... said she came in from mowing the lawn and didn't want us to see her. So Ella but we is can hear here, her. but we can hear yeah. her when she unmutes. Yes. Yeah, now if I muted myself and turn off my video camera, that you have a little bit difficulty hearing me or seeing what this is about. But um, but I'm going to turn my camera back on because I want y'all to see me if you can. So that but that's a nice option. You know, that's a little bit less disruptive than being in a classroom full of people and having to walk and down the aisle and get everybody to move their feet and uncross their legs so you can go take a phone call. You can just turn your camera off, and that's an easy way to do it. Um, whoa, Sorry. where'd we go? <laughs> we right back. Hold on. I didn't, in our I didn't whole mean to click something. Show. Um, you don't have to worry about the security icon. You don't have to worry about participants. Um, we're going to talk about chat in a minute. That's the little speech bubble because that's kind of fun. And if you don't see all those things and you're wondering, well, where do I find um, those three little buttons that say more? Um, the yellow arrow is pointing to the reactions. This is how you clap, how you send a heart, um, how you give a thumbs up. Um, th there's and, a lot of- At any time, if you wanna play with those, you go right ahead. It's, they're fun to see and we might see them in the corner, but it's not really disruptive. It doesn't make a noise or anything like that if you're in Walmart playing with the toys. Don't worry. But let's it. go ahead and practice playing with, um, or do we need to do the three little more buttons? It depends First. on what device they're on. Go ahead and okay. find if the reactions. You can, if you can find where it says reactions, you have to wake up your menu or wake up your toolbar and practice raising your hand or clapping, either one. Let's just do, yep, yeah, Martha raised her hand. Oh, look at all these people raising their hands. I will say there is a difference that's kind of a little subtle. The clapping hands are sideways, whereas the raising hand for a question is vertical. So if you see two different hands, that's why. One is clapping and it has kind of like some three lines off of it to indicate motion, like they're moving, clapping back and forth. And the other one is just raise hand. Okay, did we get everybody? Does anybody have a question about how they need how they raise their electronic hand? I'm gonna lower all your electronic hands. So if you really do have a question, you'll need to do it again. 
because I know you were just you can, there for a second. Or you can unmute yourself and ask us a question. So I don't know where to find it. Is anybody having trouble finding where to raise your hand? I think, oh, Crystal. Push that okay. little happy face, but he didn't do anything. And when I pushed Ray's hand, it didn't do anything. Let me try my. So you move your mouse and hover over all the, all the reactions. Supplies. Pardon? When you hover over the reactions and then you click on it, what does it do? It doesn't do anything. It just stays there like it is. Uh, click right on the smiley face. See, it just moves me around. Did you see I went from the side up there? Now, if I, I think it's not working. Is your Zoom screen maximized? Like, is it taking up the whole window of your computer? No, well, it's got full talking on, uh, uh, on, it's got some little recording stuff over there and over here it just says, uh, leave. Okay, well, we don't want you to click that. No, I don't want <laughs> that. Do you see at the top of your screen, the um, X and the- I see computer, laptop, iPad, cell phone. Oh, you're reading our window. Okay, you're reading the presentation. Um, yeah, above right. that, do you see, what do you see above that? Uh, right at the very top is there's a little speaker that says you review an office computer screen view option. Okay. If you keep going to the right of that, there's not even you... over there. Okay. Except to click on. Oh, well, what the next to that, the X, next to the X, do you see two little boxes on top of each other? There's a little box on top of each other, yeah. You want me to click, click those? Click and see if that makes it bigger or smaller for you. Well, it made it smaller. Okay, uh, click on it again to make it bigger. And then go down to reactions at the bottom of the screen and hover your mouse on top of it and click on it. Let's see, okay. Go down to the one and, and try it again. Mm -hmm. The word reactions. I don't have to push that yellow thing, but an arrow up, do I? No, that's, we're not clicking the reactions in the middle of the screen. You're, uh, let me change screens for you. So you can't see that at all. I, I want you to go to the very bottom of the window where, and see if when you oh, move your okay. mouse, do you see reactions? Uh -huh. yes. And if you click on reactions there, do you get oh. those options? Yes, so now I'm gonna click raise my hand and there, there you go awesome. well, okay you were, i figured out what you were doing finally it took me a minute I but i realized you were clicking on the picture i had not the menu not the real thing okay. yeah not the real thing yeah that was a little confusing but we're good um, we got you now and here's the here's the thing that i want everybody to know it's great if you can click your electronic hand or if you can clap or if you can send a heart you can also do this to raise your hand. If you can't see me, look at Gina. Do this, Gina. You can wave in a monitor or a LifeQuest uh, staff person who's in every class will see you and say, Crystal, do you have a question? Martha has her hand raised. You can do this. This is fine. You can raise your actual hand. That is a perfectly legitimate way to participate in a Zoom class. You do not have to do it electronically. It, the only reason it's helpful is if we have a really big class, sometimes like with Alan Easton's class or sometimes Rick Leach's class can get kind of big. It's hard, the monitor may miss you, may, may not see your physical hand, but the monitor is alerted electronically when someone has raised their electronic hand. So it's helpful and it keeps you from having to sit here like this you know, for 15 minutes if, um, if he's not ready, the instructor's not ready to get to questions. So if you have it's your handy raised. In other Zoom classes, we want you to feel comfortable with Zoom in no matter if it's Sunday school or with us or some other meeting. Right. So uh, we just want to teach you general knowledge things. 
you can take a Zoom class on your iPhone. We have had people sit at Starbucks and take a Zoom class. If they have their headphones in where not everybody in Starbucks is listening, that's, a, that's fine. Um, but if you're on your iPhone or a smaller device, you might have to find some of these things by clicking those three little dots that say more. The three little dot means more is there. So you just have to click those three dots and then you'll an, another menu will open. And that may be where you find things like chat, clap hands, thumbs up, things like that. You just have to, don't be afraid to click on things. You're not disrupting the other people in the class when you click on things that no one else can see what you're doing. So um, if you wanna click on those little more dots right now, if you've got those on your device, go ahead and see what's there. I think see everyone has a desktop computer today, but it's nice for us to review this so that if someone watches the recording later, they can see it. And you might um, decide to, to attend on your iPad uh, or laptop and want to see, oh, yeah, I forgot about that more. If you can't find things, click more. You're not going to disturb anybody. OK, what else? Uh, just as a note, if you do have an iPad from the Arkansas Democrat Gazette or you bought an iPad on your own, the menu for those are usually on the top instead of on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And um, the screen is a little different. So we have some pictures here of what it looks like to find things. So if someone's watching this later on an iPad, uh, actually Ella, maybe maybe one other person. I'm not sure, but uh, your buttons are in a different place. Yeah, I when I say the button, so I'm okay. Oh, good. good. Thank you. When I say the toolbar is at the bottom, the toolbar may be at the top if you're on an iPad. That's absolutely right. Okay, um, are we gonna get to chat here in we'll a moment? Go ahead and skip that, yeah. Okay, let's talk about chat. The chat is a fun way to interact with people. It's like passing notes in class, um, but we're gonna practice this because you can get in trouble. If you write something that you didn't like about the class, or if it was a, a, a comment just that you meant to one other person, you might wanna be sure that you send, you know where you're sending your note. You know, if you wanted it to go to everyone, be sure that you say everyone. If you wanted it just to go to the instructor or just to go to another participant, be sure that you send it to that person. And so if you want to wake up your toolbar bar by moving your mouse or touching your screen and get to that little speech bubble at the, at the very bottom or very top, it's usually in the middle, and go ahead and click on chat. Then you'll see a little tiny arrow um, and it either will say everyone, or if you click on that arrow, you'll get to see the participants in the class and you can type a message. So I'd like for you to type a message to either me or Gina. And when to send the message, you hit enter. A lot of people say, well, I typed it, now what? It didn't go anywhere. You have to hit the enter button to send it. Um, and this is a great way when you're participating in a class to go ahead and write your question. And then when the monitor has, when it's the appropriate time to read questions, the monitor includes your question um, in the class. And you're not disturbing the class by interrupting the instructor to ask your question. Um, you can also get information. You may be thinking, I'm not going to do this. I'm never going to write a question in class. That may be true, but you may want to receive information. And the instructor might say, I've written it, the, that link or that email address or that color to use in the paint class. I've written that specific information in the chat. And then you'll think, well, how do I know? So if you've received a message, you should see a little red number that's in that that means you have received a message. If you've if you see the little chat speech bubble and has a number next to it. Click on it and let's see. I did see well, some yeah, private Dina. messages while you were uh, speaking. And I saw that. Um, I didn't send it to you. You don't know what I said. I it usually said comments else. on my hair. <laughs> I did. I said you have usually comments hair on today. my hair. <laughs> um, but sometimes, you know, you haven't seen people in a year and you might recognize someone from a class and you go, oh, I really want their phone number. And that's why we review this is so that if you need to know how to send a private message, you can. But most of the time it's fine just to send it to everyone because it's gonna be a general comment. We do have a lot of instructors who like to lecture first and then take questions at the end. And so knowing how to do that,
means that you don't have to remember what your question is in 20 minutes. And so I find it really handy for that because it, I, and also if you type in a question, maybe the instructor will see it and go ahead and address the question. Our instructors are getting more used to Zoom and uh, are able to see things a little better than they did at first. So it's- I just uh, wanted you to really things. know, I wanted you to know basically what the chat function is for, how to find it, it's a little speech bubble, and then how to send a message and, and to pay attention to who you're sending it to, to everyone or to a single person. Each time, each time you type a message, it'll say to, from, to, from, or from, to. So um, just pay attention to that. And the very last thing I think about Zoom is the leave button. We don't want you to push that right now unless you're ready to leave. Because um, if you leave it, you'll have to go back and um, to the Zoom link and, and rejoin, uh, which is fine. That's the nice thing about Zoom is if you have to leave a meeting, you can come back. We have monitors who will let you in. Um, sometimes we have to leave a meeting. Oh, the delivery man's here and I have to sign for that. I'm just, this may take 15 minutes. I'm going to leave the meeting. Also, sometimes you don't be surprised if you're on an iPad or on an iPhone, if you get a call mm -hmm. while you're in class, it may kick you out of class. And then afterwards you'll have to rejoin. And I've seen that a few times. And um, so if something happens during class on your device, don't worry about joining it again. Even if there's only five minutes left, you might find something in that last five minutes that you really wanted to know. And maybe the instructor is waiting until the end to say something. So uh, people are watching constantly to make sure that everybody's in the class and is understanding what's going on. And you're not disturbing anybody when you leave. Um, so, but we do want at the very end of class for you to go ahead and push the leave button um, because it's like hanging up the phone. Um, you don't want to actually, you know, kind of still be in the meeting. You want to actually leave it. Now, we'll um, say also on that point real quick, if uh, we're doing another class immediately after, uh, as the host, LifeQuest will sometimes end the class and you'll see a little message that pops up that says the host has ended this class. And then you don't have to do anything at all. It's stopped your microphone and it's stopped your camera for you. Okay, I'm gonna stop and see what questions we have about Zoom. We've talked about unmuting, removing yourself from your video, taking yourself, you're closing your camera. We've talked about chatting. We've talked about how to raise your hand if you choose to, how to give a reaction if you choose to. We've talked about those three little dots that say more. Um, and we've talked about how to do all of that without having disturbed anybody in the classroom. You know what we didn't talk about, Gina, is how to change your view. We didn't. Do we, we want to do that? Is that, is that? Does that take too much time? No, we can do that. Okay, yeah. I ask a question, please. Yes, sure. Go right ahead, Ella. Um, I went to the chat and I put in a little message but now I'm not getting it to send and whether it's to everyone or to, I see the send to and I checked everyone, but it's not going anywhere. Did you press enter? Or do you see a little paper airplane that you can click? No, I see uh, at the bottom, uh, everyone send to, and I don't see my little airplane. Uh, I see file. I think the enter button, maybe she needs to know, is actually on your computer uh, okay. keyboard. Maybe I can do that then. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, Martha. Yeah, it's the enter button on your keyboard, not on the screen. Okay. So, Ella, I, I think you're on an iPad. Is that correct? No, I'm on a tablet. You're on laptop. a tablet. Okay. Um, uh -huh. So, after you type in your message, hit enter, and it oh. should send. It's crystal. Or it's okay. It's in there. It is with the enter. Okay. Thank you. There it yeah. is. And that's one of those things where I'm looking at enter, but I'm not saying exactly what I'm looking at. Thank you, Martha, for giving us that cue. Yeah. Chris, okay. On a desktop computer, correct? Yes. Yeah. Laptop here. Laptop there. Okay. I was just making sure that oh, I know I that Anne is on. I don't know. Did you yeah, ask? I was the on the computer. Laptop. I'm I got you. One of the questions people have a lot when they're in a Zoom class is they want to change their view. And I don't know if you need to, to take the stop sharing for a minute. 
I will. For us, for us to do, see our view better, but if you change, if you want to see uh, things differently, if you want to see, we want you to focus on the instructor, on the speaker. But so um, if you will go up to, I think it's going to be in the very right co top corner, um, there will be something that looks like a lot of little boxes. And sometimes it says view. And if you'll click on that, you can change it to speaker view or gallery view. Gallery view would be like Hollywood squares or the Brady Bunch and all the boxes are stacked on top of each other. Um, that's fine at the beginning or at the end of class where you wanna see everybody and you can wave and you can talk uh, and see people, the faces of folks that are attending. But if, during class, we'd like you to get back to speaker view because that way the instructor is the dominant person that you're seeing. When he or she shares their PowerPoint, that's what everybody sees. You don't have to change your view in order to try to see the PowerPoint. Zoom takes care of that for you. Um, just, but this changing your view from gallery view to speaker view is a little bit different depending on which device you're on. So does anybody have any questions about how to find it, how to change their view? If you're on an iPhone or an iPad, sometimes you have to swipe your screen in order to change views. Uh, and you can see other people on an iPhone. I think the max you can see on one screen is four. And on an iPad, the max you can see is nine. So in a large class, you won't be able to see everybody, but you can swipe the screen to see other people and see who's there. And only you can change your view. We um, Sometimes we can spotlight somebody, like in a yoga class, we can spotlight that instructor so everybody see or pin it. But we don't really have much control over how you see uh, your screen. If you want to stay in gallery view the whole time and the instructor's just one of the little squares, that's your choice. If you want to change it, you can change your perspective and you're not, no one else can see what you're seeing. You know, it's just depending on your pre preference and your ability to do that. So have I confused everybody? This is kind of one of those things that's easier to show you side by side than to tell you about, but it is kind of a nice way to enjoy class if you can see people's faces. So quiet. quiet. I think that means good. Okay. I think, all right. So let's move on to Facebook. At this point, if you're not interested in Facebook, then we've enjoyed having you today. Um, but if you would like to stick around and, and learn how to, um, what's going to go on with classes that are on Facebook, this is what Gina is going to cover in this next quick section. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you, Ella. We've enjoyed having you come back if you have I, any questions. I kind of have things out of order, I guess, just a little bit. There is something important that I want to tell you, even if you're not interested in Facebook. Um, and Ella already left, but uh, our website has some instructional videos on things like how to create a Facebook account or how to refresh your computer screen. Um, so I'll show you at the end how to find that page on our website. I think for next week, I'll put it before the Facebook section so that okay. if anyone wants to leave, and uh, that's a good note for the future. So, okay, um, great. Gina has created a lot of these videos, so it's not just somebody that you don't know. It's Gina. And so she's able, to, she's able to really get at what some frequently asked questions. Sometimes and make it, it takes me simple. five minutes to figure out what's going on, like with Crystal, but I got you there eventually. Eventually we found your clapping. And yeah. if that's something that I need to teach somebody else, I'll make a video about it and it'll be up there for everybody to see. Um, so when you get your email and you click uh, join the Facebook group, um, you'll have to wait for us to accept your request or you can go into Facebook and search for LifeQuest Summer 2021 and requ request to join. And that's another way to find it if you don't have your emails with you real quick. Thank you all. I'm leaving now. Appreciate it. Bye, Anne. We'll Thank see you, Anne. you soon. Okay. okay. Bye. Bye. Yes, Martha. Hi. Me and you. Go ahead. Oh. That, um, so do we need to do that every term? Yes. We will have a new password for the private Facebook group every term. 
because it's a different group. We've deleted Okay, so that means we group. need to actually log in and like you said, okay. Yes, otherwise the people who did the last term would just continue to the next term without. Okay, them. yeah, got it. And since it's for, yeah, it's not easy for us because we have to delete everybody out of there and restart another group. And then you all have to rejoin a group again, but it's every term. But we have a slightly different mixture of participants and paid and registered members and instructors. And so it's just easier to clean it out. And plus, you know, like she said, these are for this is access for those who have registered. So Gina literally or Donna literally have to double check. Has Martha paid for the summer? Oh, she has. Well, she's asked to join. We'll accept her request. So there's a little bit of verification that happens. We don't just let, and some of this is for security too. We don't just let anybody wander into Facebook or Zoom classes um, that we don't know. Form, the paper form, we asked for your Facebook name. And that's uh, because a lot of people, when they register for Facebook, will have a different name. Uh, teachers, counselors, policemen, they don't necessarily join Facebook with their real name because they don't want the public to find them. And so if they join a class, we'll ask them, could you please let us know what your name is so that we can verify that against who's paid? Like I might have registered as Gina McElhaney on Facebook, but as LifeQuest, you don't know me that way. And so if I have Gina McElhaney ask me to join, I'm going to say, no, she's not a member of LifeQuest. And so uh, just know in the future, that's why we're asking what your Facebook name is, is so that we can verify that you're the person who has paid. <laughs> and, and are we having any classes that are just Facebook only this time, that's like John Brummett? That we are not having any classes this term that are exclusively on Facebook only. Okay. But uh, uh, we do usually have John Brummett on, the, on Facebook exclusively because his uh, attendance is larger than Zoom allows. In a Zoom class, we can have up to 100 people or 100 devices. And uh, with his being so large, it doesn't work that way. So, <laughs> all right. Um, this is a little video on how to find live classes on Facebook. So if, if you've joined our Facebook group and you want to watch something, uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and click play and kind of talk you through what's going on. Uh, I'm, in the group and I'm going to change the activity to recent post. So Facebook will either show you recent post or new activity. New activity is a video or a post that has been commented on in the last little bit. Whereas recent posts are chronological. So you'll want the most recent thing up at the top because the live videos are gonna be at the top. You look for a red live square in the corner and that will also tell you that it's a live video versus a recording. I've uh, changed pages here in this so that I can show you what it looks like if the uh, video is not live. So we go down and here's another video of John's class but there's not a red live in it, the corner. So this is, if I look a little closer, I can see that this was January 27th in the top. So that's, a little trick that some people don't know is to look for the red live and also make sure you're in recent post. And that's how you can find the live classes. One thing I did in this page also was I went to the topics and I selected just behind the headlines so that I could see only his classes. And I try to tag classes for, uh, what they are within the first 10 minutes of the class going live so that people can find it if that's how they're using that. And then let's see. So that's all I show about Facebook on in this. The extra bits uh, that I wanna show is that the uh, online class tutorials, if you go to our website at the top, you'll see what we do. If you click on that, you can find a place that says online class tutorials. And there are, this video will be up there in a little bit so that other people can watch how to be online with LiveQuest. Uh, we'll have how to refresh your page so that uh, if you go to Facebook and it's five minutes before the class starts, when the live video starts, it doesn't just pop in there. You have to refresh the page. And 
that just means reload the page or get the new information from the internet about what's going on on that page because it just doesn't automatically send it to you. And uh, a lot of other things are on that page. So I encourage you, and if it's a question that uh, you have and me answering it for 200 people will help 200 people, then I'll post it here. If it will help seven people, I'll probably post it here. <laughs> so I, I want you all to be able to navigate our website and other websites and uh, get the most out of your online classes. Also, uh, as a bonus, at the end here, we talk about our annual library. So you've started the uh, online adventure with LifeQuest here in June or July. Well, we've already had classes last year and in January and March and February. The recorded classes that we did, uh, a lot of them are in our annual library. And for $25 right now, you can have access to all of those classes from the past. At the end of this term on August 12th, the ones that we've done in the summer will be added to this library. And um, it's growing by leaps and bounds and it expanded a lot faster than we anticipated. So we're uh, looking at reorganizing the library over the summer and making it a little more user-friendly. Right now, it's just all in chronological order. When you get 400 videos in there, that's a lot to sift through to find what you wanna find and we recognize that. So uh, we look forward to reorganizing it and helping people find what they wanna find in an easier way. So do you have any questions about anything now? Anything. My favorite pie is pecan pie today. I like ice cream. I like Mexican food, Italian food. You'll often hear me uh, ask instructors at the beginning of class, uh, when we do interviews, I'll say, what's your favorite something? Just, you know, to help break the ice. I ramble a lot and tell bad jokes. Donna uh, does not tell bad jokes and Leah, uh, I don't think she tells bad jokes either, just me. So <laughs> lucky you if you start a Leah class. Leah doesn't tell me. jokes. Well, I, I don't know that Leah tells jokes, uh, but LifeQuest staff will be there uh, in class to help you with anything. Um, you can private message us if you're having difficulty or if you need to know something, you can always call the office or email us at info at lifequestofarkansas.org. So I hope you've learned something. We cut it right here at 1158. So I think we did great. This little note under the questions though, um, we do have volunteers. And if you would like an appointment, if you've got just trouble with your home computer and you can just never figure something out like the volume button, <laughs> or just you can never quite figure out something that's giving you uh, trouble. We have volunteers that will give you a call. They might be able to walk you through it over the phone. Um, if it's a laptop, they'll meet you up here at Second Presbyterian Church. Um, and sit with you. And sometimes that one-on-one -on -one is all it takes to really have a more successful experience. So um, call the LifeQuest office or email me or Gina um, at info at lifequestofarkansas.org. And uh, we will connect you with a volunteer. We don't want a little bit of trouble to prevent you from getting to classes online. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Call us if you have questions or come back next week. Same time, same place. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day, y'all. Bye.